Hi, George here. Let's take a look at removing people from a photograph. Now that summer is over, vacations are all done, I'm sure you have a lot of pictures and I'll need some cleanup before I can add them into your photo album. And this is a good example for this kind of fix that we need to do all the time on vacation photos. You have some pictures of your family in front and maybe in the back people walking around. They kind of detract from the main subject of your image and it's fairly easy to do. So we'll take a look at this taking out and removing those people in the background and we'll try it with a couple of different techniques and see which one works best. And in reality, you need to choose the technique that works best for that part of the picture. You may use several different techniques for the whole picture. It depends again on what's in there. We'll start off with an easy one, but first, before I do anything like this, I always like to make a duplicate of this background. Let's just right click over here and duplicate layer, choose okay, and then hide the original. That's just a safety. We'll be changing our pixels in here. If things get messed up, we can always go back to that one and try again. And before we start, I'm trying to get my subscriber rate up here on this channel. My main channel has close to 76,000 subscribers. This one, we're just a bit over 3,000. Let's see if we can get that number up. So if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button. That'll really help out the channel a lot. Okay, we'll start over here at this guy, left-hand side. I'll just scroll in here. Now I'm using the wheel on my mouse to do that scroll movement right there. If you don't have that set up, it's easy to do. Go up to edit, come down to preferences and general. And this just that checkbox right there, zoom with scroll wheel. It's a real easy way to zoom in and out. On this one, let's grab our standard lasso tool. There we are. I'm just gonna draw a big circle around him like that, just a big loop. Let's go up here to edit. And we'll try fill selection. This frequently works out very well, especially if there's a nice even background and whatever it is that you're removing is isolated. This can work out very well. What you want is this content aware. Now, Photoshop Elements is going to go in and look around this and try to take some of this outside stuff and paste it on top of that. And it frequently does a very good job of this. Okay, just choose OK. There we go. And that's perfect. Control D to deselect that. So it's good on these isolated images. Now, I wouldn't use that up here because I guarantee it's gonna take part of his head and stick his head over here. That's not gonna work. Same problem in here. It's not a good tool for that. This one might work out, so we'll give it a try. Again, I'll just do a big loop around him like that. And then back up here to edit, come down to fill selection. And once again, content aware, let's see what happens. And that was pretty good. Sometimes on spots like this where you have a horizon light, you may put the horizon in the wrong place. It didn't do that this time. That worked out well. So there's with him in there. And again, let's just undo that. And there it is without. And to remove your selection, just use the control D keyboard shortcut. The okay, same problem in here with them in behind our subjects. We don't want to Try that there, although I could try to do the top of them. We'll use a different technique for that. Okay, let's try this one more time. Right up here, this may or may not work. We'll give it a shot. It's a little bit close to that person there on the left-hand side. But we'll give it a shot because it is the fastest way to do this. Edit, fill selection, choose OK. And that worked out just fine this time. Okay, and Control D to deselect. One problem I see here it's kind of a something right up here and it's right over here. It copied that bit from here and put it over here. So I want to get rid of that. And it kind of missed the line right here. The line should go straight across. It's a bit wavy up here, but I don't think that that matters. I think I can just ignore that. But let's fix this one. And for this, we'll switch over to the clone stamp tool right there. And whenever I'm using a clone stamp on a photograph, I always come in and set this on a soft brush and not a hard brush. Start off here, we'll try 100. Well, maybe that's okay. Maybe I'll go down a little bit. 65, that's better. And then to use this tool, click where you want to copy from. Hold the Alt key down and then click and then move over where you want to copy to. Now, if you look up here, you can see here, you can see what you're actually copying and you can use this to line that up. So look for any lines, try to line your lines up and we'll just do that and that fixes that. Now that overlay thing, that's right down here where it says clone overlay. And that's the show overlay. You can normally leave all that just as is. It should be fine, but that's where that comes from. That's that clone overlay. So if I was over here against this shirt here, you can see where it's copying from right there. The big problem with the clone stamp is copying too much and you may get some duplication. We could fix that, but I think that's pretty good. Let's go control zero, go back to full screen. All right, everything over here is fixed. Everything over there is fixed. In here is pretty good. Let's now fix this area here. Now it's in behind this person's head. We need to solve that problem. So go up here, I'll grab the lasso tool again. 
Now use the space bar to move that more towards the center. Now for here, I want a nice clean edge right along here and up around so this is hard to do with the regular lasso tool because it's a little bit wobbly. You try to draw a straight line and it's a little hard to do. If you have a really good touch, maybe you could do that. But I prefer switching my tool over to the polygonal lasso tool. Let's just zoom in a bit. With this tool, you come in and you place a point and then you move your line and you place another point and Photoshop Elements comes in and just fills in lines between the points. So it makes it very controllable. So I tend to use this one when it's really critical. Okay, let's go ahead, we'll come around here. Notice that I have the feathering here set at zero, which should be okay. Now up here we have some hair, it's a bit of a problem, but we'll see how this goes. Staying right at the outer edge of that hair, and that should be all right. We may have to come back in and just do a little bit of fudging on this one, and out and around. Hold the space bar down, and up here. Now I could do this whole thing with a layer mask if I wanted to, and try to help protect it that way. That makes it easier to go back in and fix things. With a layer mask, you need to have something in behind that you can work with. We have the original, which is here. So I would have to come in, mask him out, put him on a new layer, and then paint them out, and then come back in again. That works, but we'll try here without using layer masks in this video. We've done those in different videos. We'll go over just about like that. Let's go back to our clone stamp tool. Come right up onto the horizon line, since we know what that is. I'll click on the horizon line. Alt and click. Let's bring that over here, and I'll try to match that horizon line up. And then I'll paint from that point. And right down over his head like this. Space bar. And then continue on down. And I think that's pretty good. Let's just zoom out a little bit. And control D to deselect. And that's real nice, but it's a little bit hard on the edges up in here. So to fix that, I'm going to bring my brush size down here a lot. Let's see, left square bracket. Let's set the opacity down pretty low here. And then I'll click. I'm going to come in here just a few spots and just soften up a little bit of the edge in a few areas here. So it looks like we had just some air coming through. A little bit of background showing through on this and just roughening up the edge and softening it down a bit. So I don't want to have that hard line in there. I just want to break up that line. And since this here is a little bit messy, we can get away with this. And a bit right over in here maybe. And it's a low opacity, so it takes several clicks to make this work. Let's go to this side this time. Again, what I'm trying to do is just to not have a solid line that's going along there. Instead, it's kind of a jagged line. And I'm using a low transparency, a low opacity, so that I get a nice soft edge. If I had a hard opacity, I'd have a hard edge showing up in there, and that's what I'm trying to get rid of is that hard edge. So just coming in and just carefully breaking that edge up a little bit. And I think that's going to do a good job. We'll back out. And that works perfectly. Okay, that's fixed. Same thing over here. Use the exact same trick this time. Again, we'll have to use a selection to protect what we don't want to lose. And I'll use the polygonal lasso tool one more time. And when you're using this tool, make sure you don't click too fast. If you click too fast, it's going to close that selection. Let me just show you right here. If I double click, it closes that selection. And you have to start over again. So make sure you don't click too fast. Just give it a beat between each click. And if you have a curve in here, just put your dots closer together. If you have a straight line, you can go further apart. And exact same thing, I'll come right around the hair in here and try to follow that hair. And it's a little bit messier this time, so I can try to put in some of that roughness as I'm actually making this selection. You can see some right up in here, there's a bit of a hair out there. I can go ahead and just try to grab some of that. Now up here, I'm going to be outside of my painting area, so that's okay. I can actually just go up and around that and not worry about that area. And let's come over here and just kind of follow that jaggedness in here of his hair. And then over here, it's more smooth on this side. And I'm going to come down above the eyelash. I don't need the eyelash. Come right across at that point. And let's come around on the towel on this side. And same thing, just put in several points. 
and you give it a beep between each point. And I can also stay away from his hair right here. I think we're okay on that. Back around to our beginning point. And here's the selection. Okay, same trick, back to the bone stamp tool. I'm going to bring the size up again. That's the right square bracket key. And I'll choose my horizon line right from there. Alt and click. Let's bring it in here and try to match that horizon. There it is. And I'll bring the opacity back up again to 100%. That's better. Try that again. Alt click. And put the horizon right there. And we'll come in and carefully remove these people. Should be a pretty easy fix as you can see. And to take care of him, come way out here, Alt and click, come straight across. Let's just line up that horizon line, it's right there. And take that out. Control D to deselect. And the hair looks perfect this time. Control zero to fit screen. Last thing of course, we can improve this some more by working with our values a little bit. So go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and choose levels, where it says use previous layer, doesn't matter on this picture, just choose okay. And I'll first boost the blacks a little bit, that's the left hand side, just make it just a bit darker. Let's boost the lights in here. I'm just making it more contrasty. Reason why I like this one instead of the brightness contrast is that I can control the brightness separate from the darkness. So it gives me more control over that. And I can control the midtone values in here. Just find a nice pleasing spot and I think that looks pretty good right there. If you want to have written instructions on how to use these different tools, I have those instructions in my HTG Photo Coach program for Photoshop Elements. And I'll put a link for that right there in the description. Very easy to use, just do a search for what you want to find. And you'll get step-by-step -step instructions for all the different tools, menus, panels, everything here inside of Photoshop Elements. And of course, this is always up to date. All right, don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments about that, go ahead and leave those in the comments. I check comments all the time and I respond to every single comment. You also can request other videos. If you think I'm missing something here, just ask for a video and I'll see if I can work that in. And I'll see you next time.